You've probably learned about two's complement to let you represent negative numbers in binary in order to be able to do arithmetic with them. And that may have left you wondering, is there a tens complement for base 10 numbers? And the answer is, yes there is. Now in order to show you tens complement, I need to do a quick review of two's complement. This is going to be really cool, so bear with me a little bit. Let's say we want to find the two's complement equivalent of negative 87. And we're going to be working in 8 bits, so we say that n is equal to 8. Now, you've probably learned a technique that might have been called flip and add or invert and add, and that's where you write down positive 87 and its binary equivalent, which is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. And then you flip each of the bits 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, then add 1. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Zero, zero, one. And we say that this is negative 87 in two's complement form. Now let's take a moment to see what I think is really going on here. When we have n is equal to 8 bits, that gives us a total of 256 possible combinations. So we can go from 0 to 1 to 2, all the way up to 255. This is our range of positive numbers. But what we really want to do is we want to throw some negative numbers in there. We want to map this onto the range of negative 128 up to negative 1, 0, 1, and 127 at the top. And the way to do that, of course, is to take the top half of this range here, which starts at 128, and there's 127 right next to it, and shuffle this down so that it becomes the range of negative numbers from negative 128 to negative 1. So 128 becomes negative 128, 129 becomes negative 127, all the way up to 255 becomes negative 1. And it should be obvious here that the difference between this upper set of numbers and this lower set of numbers is exactly 256, which is the same thing as 2 to the nth. Remember, n is 8 in this case. So the way to get from the top range of numbers to the bottom range of numbers is to subtract 256. In fact, we can make ourselves a little chart that says that if we want to represent the numbers 0 to 127, we just leave those as is. And if we want to represent the numbers negative 128 up to negative 1, then we should subtract 256 to get those numbers. 256, remember, is the same as 2 to the nth, which is the same as 1 followed by eight zeros. Let's try it out. We want to find the two's complement of negative 87, so we're going to start with positive 87 as usual, which is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, and we're going to subtract that from 256, 2 to the nth, which is 1, followed by eight zeros. So here we go, and already we see we got a little problem here. We're going to have to do a lot of borrowing, so uh, this becomes zero, and this becomes uh, one zero, which is the same thing as two in binary. And then we got to borrow from there, so that becomes one, and this becomes one zero again. Borrow, borrow, and we see that as we do this over and over again, we're essentially going to get a whole bunch of ones here, and the very last one is going to be a one zero. So now we can do the subtraction. Uh, this is the uh, same thing as two, so two minus one is one. One minus one is zero, one minus one is zero. This is a one. 0, 1, 0, 1. And that is exactly the number we're looking for. This is the same thing as the negative 87 we came up with before. So this is the 2's complement version of negative 87 done by subtracting it from 256 rather than doing the flip and add. Now we're ready to see how this all works for base 10 and 10's complement. Just as with 2's complement, we need to set our value for n. Let's go with n equals 3. This means our numbers are going to have at most 3 digits in them. We're going to start by writing down the number line. With 3 digits, we can represent the numbers 0, 1, up to 999. 9, 9. But we want to represent a range of numbers that includes negatives. In particular, we want to go from negative 500 all the way up to 499. With negative 1, 0, and 1 in between. Remember the number line from binary? We're going to take the upper range of numbers, which is 500 up to 999, 
and translate those down into the lower range. So 500 becomes negative 500, 501 becomes negative 499, and 999 becomes negative 1. And you can see here the difference is exactly 1,000, which is the same thing as 10 to the third, where 3 is our n. And this 1,000 here looks a lot like the 2 to the 8 that we had before, which was 1 followed by 8 zeros. In this case, we got a 1 followed by 3 zeros, and we're going to see that this works out very beautifully in the end. So to get from our upper range of numbers to our lower range of numbers, we just need to subtract 1,000. Let's try that with a real number. Let's say I want to find the tens complement of negative 318. We're going to start with the positive 318, and we're going to subtract that from 1,000. We've got some borrowing to do, so 1 becomes 0, this becomes 10, but then we got to borrow, so this becomes 9, and this is 10. But we got to borrow again, so that becomes 9, and this becomes 10. And now we can do the subtraction, so 10 minus 8 is 2. 9 minus 1 is 8. 9 minus 3 is 6. So 682 is equivalent to negative 318 in tens complement. Doesn't that just blow your mind that, that negative 318 and 682 are the same number? Well, one thing we should be able to do is if we take negative 318 and we add 318, we should get 0. Let's try it out. So to do this, we're going to take 318 and we're going to add it to negative 318, but we said that negative 318 is the same as 682. 8 plus 2 is 10, 8 plus 2 is 10, and 6 plus 3 plus 1 is 10. Throw away the last digit, and in fact, we get 0. So this works. Let's try another example. Let's do 496 minus 318. This should come out to be 178. Let's see if it works. So 496, and we're going to add that to negative 318, but we said that negative 318 is the same as 682. 6 plus 2 is 8. 9 plus 8 is 17. Carry the 1. Uh, 6 plus 5 is 11. Throw away the 1, and look at that. Those two numbers are the same. I think we're fairly confident now that we can find the tens complement of a base 10 number by subtracting that number from 10 to the nth, where n is the number of digits in the original number. So if we've got a five digit number, we're gonna subtract it from 10 to the fifth, or 10,000. So the last thing I'm gonna leave you with is, can we do flip and add for 10's complement? In other words, in binary, all we had to do was invert each of the bits and then add one. Can we do the same thing for 10's complement? And the answer is, yes we can. Let me show you how it works. Let's start with our negative 87 again. Positive 87 is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. And the first step in flip and add is the flip part of it, which is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Now, another way to do the flip is to simply subtract our original number from a number that is all 1's. Let's see if it works. 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus 0 is 1, and yeah, it seems to work for each one of the bits here. So what we're doing is we are subtracting our original number from 2 to the nth minus 1, which is the same thing as 255. The last step, of course, is to add 1. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And this is our 2's complement for negative 87. Now, for base 10, the number we're subtracting from is 10 to the nth minus 1, in our case, n is going to be 3, so this will be 10 to the third minus 1, or 999. Nine, nine. Let's try it out. Negative 318 subtracted from 999 nine, nine gives us 1, 8, 6, and then the last step is to add 1, 682. And if you recall, this is the same number as negative 318 in tens complement. So the flip and add does work, but this concept of flip is a little bit different. It's not just simply going from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. It's doing a subtraction from basically the highest number you can represent in each one of the places. In binary, the highest number you can represent is a 1. In base 10, the highest number you can represent is a 9. So write down a bunch of 9s, subtract the numbers, and then do the usual add 1 at the very end to get the 10s complement number.
So Tens complement is possible to do, and it's kind of mind-blowing, but once you figure it out, it all makes perfect sense. So the next time someone wants you to do some simple math, why don't you do it in Tens complement and really throw them for a loop?